All right, we're going to squeeze in one more, uh, yep. but one of the shorter ones. Chris Cornell, because that's not too bad. That's quite to the yeah. point. It's very difficult to know what to write in that one. It's just like, mm -hmm. yeah, I like his voice. I like his voice. Don't like the song. I like his voice. Don't like the song. <laughs> All right. Carl and Brendan here from Games, Brains and Headbanging Life. GBHBL.com for short. And it's track by track time. It's we're doing something not completely different, but different in a way because I did not know what the hell I was getting myself in for it, into here. So Brendan suggested Chris Cornell, No One Sings Like You Anymore, Volume 1. Obviously, I just presumed this was a solo release at some point in his career. And then I looked into it uh, and it turns out it is the fifth studio album by the vocalist Chris Cornell, but it was released uh, after he died in 2017 without prior announcement by his estate and Universal Music Enterprises, December 11, 2020. And it's a covers album consisting of 10 covers that were sequenced and recorded in Chris Cornell to went in 2016. So about a year before he passed away. So that, then looking down the track list, I was like, okay, I recognize a fair few here. And a couple really jumped out at me. I was like, oh, I really want to hear these versions so it was quite an exciting little listen really and once you know that it was released you know posthumously mm. the name of the album i think holds a hell of a lot more weight right because it's somebody of his family or estate have said have called this no one sings like you anymore with him to you know pass like that. sorry little moment there but i was like oh isn't that nice it is sweet it is sweet and it's a fair statement as well because you know it's been no secret we have uh been highly pr uh, praising Chris Cornell's vocals, um, one of the greatest vocalists in the entire world. Yep. Okay, let's get into this. Get It While You Can, which is a cover of a Janis Joplin track, which makes for an interesting listeners, obviously. The voices are quite different. I don't know the original very well. I had some familiarity with it, but not enough that I could really, really do a comparative. But... And you're going to hear this a lot. Chris Cornell could sing the alphabet and it would still sound great. That being said, this track don't do a lot for me. No, I, I didn't feel like I knew this one either. Um, you know, so I, I, sometimes that was better for me because it just meant I kind of listened to them like they were Chris's songs. You know? Yeah. <laughs> um, but I don't really like the song as a problem. And, and, and although I... Do like hearing him sing and he sings it very well i actually don't think this one i didn't feel like this one stretched him there are some songs in this where you know I, the sort of more somber emotional tones and i that's my favorite style of him singing and i this this one i felt like he could have just done in terms of, obviously you can sing with your eyes closed but whatever the analogy is for singing singing yes. with, with a yam in his mouth <laughs> <laughs> uh, a yam interesting <laughs> Okay, jump into the fire. This is a cover of a Harry Nielsen song. I quite like the peppy rhythm of this and it's got good vibes. I like that the vocals don't overpower the guitar too because there's a fair argument to say that, you know, being a solo work, he could have put his vocals right at the highest point in the mix and all that. But no, this guitar's point is here as well. Overall, a catchy little ditty that doesn't do me any harm. Yeah, a little bit more poppy, this one, with nice little bits of drumming and a very retro sounding guitar tone that is sung very well, of course. Um, it's decent. I don't mind it. It's not particularly interesting overall, but it's not a bad song. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to put it out and out. Like, this ain't an interesting album overall, folks. It really is. And it's for your super fans out there to hear some versions of tracks you may never heard uh, in a style you may never have heard before. Um, and every so often you'll come across something like Sad, Sad City. Uh, which is a cover of a band called Ghostland Observatory, Observatory, and I've never heard of them. I don't know them. Uh, and the thing is, I find this track pretty boring overall. I'm not sure what the appeal, right, of this track is supposed to be outside of Cornell's silky vocals. The melody, the chorus, it's all just fine, but it's a boring ass track. And if he wasn't, it wasn't for the fact that I was listening to Chris Cornell, I would probably not, uh, 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 this would have no impact. That's interesting, that, because this is my favorite one so far. Um, it's another song I hadn't heard before, but I quite like the fact that it's got a bit of a country vibe to it. Uh, it's got a nice pace, a bit of a foot tapper, and it's course it's sung very well. I think overall it is quite a down and quite a morose sounding track, uh, and I like that. <laughs> Depressing sound, I suppose. But I also think that that style is more suited to the quite emotional way that Chris Cornell sings. So for me, uh, yeah, I thought this was a really good one. 
Okay, all right, different point of view on that one. Uh, see if we match up on Patience. In the track listing, this was the one I was most excited about as I love the original. Of course, it is a Guns N' Roses cover. And it's the highlight of the record uh, so far for me as it gives a really different spin with some great dramatic ambience. Of course, Cornell's voice is immense for this. Um, and that's really interesting for me because I think Axel Rose also sounded great in the original. It's a very good cover that I think does feel fresh enough to make me like, I wouldn't mind hearing this one again. Yeah, I think it's a real like. I, I, again, I am also a, as well a fan of the Guns N' Roses version, so this isn't yeah. like necessarily dissing that. I just think that Chris Cornell was such a strong singer, uh, and changes the style of it just enough to make it really his own. Um, you know, makes it a little bit sadder, a little bit more emotional, and everything like that. You know, so wait, this is my favorite version of this song. Um, not to say that I don't like the Guns N' Roses one, but I just think this is song perfectly. I think he sounds fantastic. Yeah. Um, there is a point sometimes, like we've already said, it doesn't really matter what he sings. He's such a great voice that if I don't like the song, I often like hearing him sing here. But here it just works great because I know the song, I like the song, and now I like this version of the song too. There it is. It was always it was an obvious one, really. Uh, but less obvious was nothing compares to you. So this comes from the family, a Prince band, but better known as a song sung by Sinead O'Connor, uh, a brave cover. Because this song is mighty iconic. And it's very hard to top what she did with it. That being said, putting out there now, can't stand a song, don't want to ever hear it again. Cornell does a great job though, changing the tone with a deep acoustic guitar thrum and letting his gruffer voice do a lot of the work. Yeah, I'm not a fan of this song either. Probably because of the Sinead O'Connor stuff, to be honest with you, because that's the overplayed bit. I remember, you know, if somebody asked me who did this song that's the name that pops into your head i think yeah you know um but i think i love this version of it i think he sings it amazingly um you know just yeah, it's his voice again i mean well, many times you have to say it you know i think he yeah. makes crack his own sounds absolutely stunning and his voice just oozes emotion and class that it's the the it's the words of this track by track great vocals it's simple as that we can't get around that um it is about his voice after all and that brings us to watching the wheels and it's the obligatory john lennon cover find me a covers album that doesn't have a beatles slash john lennon uh cover um very few don't touch it but i don't recognize this track i don't know it but listening to this version i thought i could really understand what the original probably sounded like i like this it's chill with a slightly somber touch good melody and shock Great vocals. Although I do think he's kind of gone for a kind of softer Lennon vibe here. Because John Lennon, soft voice, very, very easy to listen to. And I think Cornell's kind of tried to match that here. Yeah, I don't I don't like this one. Um, ah! I, I really like listening to him sing. And that's why I chose this album. Because I just wanted to check out some other songs that he sung. Uh, but as much as I love his voice, I am, to be honest, other than a couple of songs, getting quite bored. <laughs> and songs like this don't really help very much. It is, yeah. of course, well sung. You know, there's no denying that at any point in the album. But I find it to be an extremely boring song that doesn't stretch his vocals in any way. Fair enough. Okay. Well, I mean, I, it's not surprising that we have different opinions on certain tracks because they are covers. So that's going to yeah. be a thing. Right. What are we up to? Uh, speaking of, you don't know nothing about love. I don't know who Carl Hall is, but listening to this track, I get the impression we're probably going a bit back here. It's a perfectly fine ballad that sees Cornell really stretch his voice in impressive style. Yeah, another one I don't know, and I don't know who Carl Hall is either. Mm. Um, you know, musically decent, easy enough to listen to, and a really good performance from Chris, and where he builds into the chorus and really gives it plenty. So uh, overall, not bad little song. Showdown. I know this track. It's an ELO, aka Electric Light Orchestra track, and I like it, but I like it even more given the Cornell cover treatment. It's got good rhythm with some different layers. Yeah, this is cool. Uh, yeah, I'm the complete opposite on this one. Oh. Um, another song that just does very little for me. It's well sung, of course. It's got a catchy enough little beat, a nice little bass section. So I don't hate that, but it's just so far removed from what I listen to that even having a great singer in the world, I guess if you don't like the style of music, he can't save the song. 
So. Wow. Okay. All right. Let's see if we can get there in the last two. Uh, penultimate track to be treated right. Terry Reed, aka Super Lungs. Only Chris Cornell could even get close to the vocals here, and it's a wonderfully dreamy cover. Thankfully, this is also a track that I don't think is particularly overplayed, so I don't hate the original either. I got along with this one quite nicely. Yeah, because it's got some moments that I quite like. It's got a nice little country train to the guitars. Um, I like the voice to hear, especially in the kind of quite dark and morose sounds at the start of the song. Um, yeah, I quite like it. I think the vocals are obviously I like them, but there's also some nice little guitar melody, a little bit of uh, additional orchestral layers as well. Uh, it's a nice sad song, as horrible as it might seem to say it. I like Chris singing better on sad tracks than I do on more upbeat ones. Yeah. I get you. All right. And last but not least, we've got Stay With Me Baby. Uh, we began with a woman being covered and the album ends with another as Lorraine Ellison gets the treatment here. Cornell doing a subtle job of covering this, keeping it simple, keeping it heartfelt, keeping it impactful. Yeah, it's quite a big sounding track. It's sort of reminiscent, I thought, I felt like of the old kind of crooning yeah. you know, tracks like Sinatra and all that sort of stuff, you know, where it had mm. some really kind of big jazz sounds and is weirdly quite messy to listen to musically. But I do think Chris really pushes his vocals out there for an absolutely huge chorus. Musically, not really my cup of tea. Don't find it massively interesting. But I do think he really throws his all into it and sings it very well. So uh, definitely a mixed bag on this one, really, more than anything else. But then I didn't expect anything. I didn't expect to come away uh, wowed or going, oh, my God, or whatever like that. But it was at least interesting, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah, uh, that's what I wanted to isn't it like you said we're a fan of the man like his voice so you know we'll check out something he sung agreed right top three tracks and i will go first i have chosen patience uh i've chosen watching the wheels and i've chosen to be treated right whereas i have chosen patience mm -hmm. nothing compares to you and sad sad city right mix there some seriously different ones but it's going to be down to your own personal taste based upon how familiar you are perhaps with the original how much you like them how much you don't and so on but this is no one sings like you anymore volume one by chris cornell you got any thoughts you want to share with us you know what to do let us know in the comments thank you very much for watching if you'd like to see more content like this please consider hitting the subscribe button it is gratefully appreciated you can find us over at gbhbl.com our full website where reviews news and so much more goes up daily we're also on all social media platforms facebook instagram twitter threads at gbhbl just search for gbhbl and you will find us out there we also have merchandise on sale you can access the shop via the website